Food Network owes a lot to Emeril Lagasse and his trend-setting show, Emeril Live. While you might think you know the show, here's some dish even die-hard food fans don't know about Emeril Live. Emeril Lagasse was undeniably the star of the show on Emeril Live, but that doesn't mean he didn't bring on extra talent from time to time. The 90s show featured a number of celebrities during its 10-year run, with notable guest star appearances from Patti LaBelle, Michael McDonald, Joe Perry, Sammy Hagar, Patton Oswalt, and Jimmy Buffett. When Lagasse hosted celebrities, he made sure to make the episode as special as possible, introducing his guests enthusiastically and making even more delectable meals than usual. When Aretha Franklin guest starred, Lagasse told the audience, Tonight, I'm entertaining royalty. The place is ready to explode. When Franklin finally made her entrance, the crowd went wild, and everyone sang together for a moment before the cooking began. The two celebrities then made Franklin's peach cobbler together. Well, I'm getting ready to get down. <laughs> Charlie Daniels, on the other hand, spent his time with the band rather than in the kitchen on the Gotta Have Garlic episode. As you might guess, the episode features Lagasse making garlic-centric recipes like soup, dressing, and jam. Lagasse was the true definition of on fire when he signed the contract for Emerald Live. The show was an immediate success, winning the hearts of Americans with the host's authenticity and spirit. When it began airing, Lagasse's success snowballed and the personable chef rapidly became a national celebrity. In fact, back when tickets had to be purchased over the phone, the sheer volume of calls for Emerald Live once caused a small town's telephone switchboard to stop working. Along with exponentially gaining fans, the awards immediately started pouring in. Emerald Live began airing in 1997, and that very year the show won a Cable Ace Award for Best Informational Show. Although many fans enjoyed the show for more than cooking tips, like Lagasse's exclamations in the live band, it also provided the public with useful kitchen knowledge. Also in 1997, Time rated Emerald Live among the top shows on the air, no small feat for a new show with a formula that was completely unheard of. The following year, GQ listed Lagasse among its Men of the Year. The more attention Lagasse received, the more people he charmed. The first few years of Emerald Live were definitely Lagasse's time in the sun, and he has the receipts to prove it. Lagasse's earlier appearances on the Food Network weren't terribly successful. In fact, his first show, How to Boil Water, was a dismal failure. Next, he tried a scripted show called The Essence of Emerald. Lagasse hated it, and it did little to showcase the chef's natural charisma and captivating personality. Food is my life. I love to cook. I love to eat. I love wine. As the saying goes, the third time's the charm. Lagasse's next shot with the Food Network allowed him the creativity to do whatever he wanted for an hour, and he let his imagination fly. His new show wouldn't just be him in a kitchen demonstrating how to cook. It would be a multifaceted, genre-defying show with a band, live audience, and a cooking segment all in one program. It was the most out-there cooking show of its time. A couple of decades ago, Lagasse was the chef everyone was talking about on the Food Network. Not only was Emerald Live a unique, award-winning twist on cooking shows, but it was also the most popular show of its time. In From Scratch, Inside the Food Network, author Alan Salkin writes, Back then, most viewers thought food was the Emerald Network. His show was on every weeknight at 8pm, and he overshadowed all the other stars. Emerald Live and Essence of Emerald were the two top-rated shows on the network when they first came out. This was prior to the Food Network's pivot to reality TV-focused programming and before Lagasse's old-school charm was replaced by flashier cooking stars like Sonny Anderson and Bobby Flay. It's become this, uh, you know, food as a competition, uh, like a sport. Although the Food Network currently features chefs traveling the country in search of food or leading high-stakes cooking contests, Lagasse reigned when it was a simpler game. Back in the late 90s and early 2000s, Lagasse's classic and personable approach to entertainment was what brought viewers to the network. Lagasse was used to being the king of the Food Network, so when the network began to want different things from him, he resisted. Despite consistent feedback from the executives, he refused to get with the program, and Emerald Live was cancelled. The show's slow downfall began in 2004 when the new president of the network, Brooke Johnson, began doing audience research to learn how viewers perceived the channel. Many viewers saw it as a basic cooking channel, offering little more than recipes. And we're going to discuss sponge cakes. Cooking shows were gaining popularity and the network's competition was growing, with other channels offering more exciting entertainment. Despite being told to try new things, Lagasse wasn't ready to give up his unique formula. When Johnson eventually told him that the show needed to end, Lagasse was in full denial, responding, You're full of it. Emerald Live was cancelled, leaving Lagasse devastated, resentful, and confused that the network was moving on without him. What have I gotten myself into? When the head of marketing, Susie Fogelson, suggested Lagasse go on Iron Chef or Next Food Network star, he scoffed and replied, How about Platinum Chef? Have you thought of that? For Lagasse, cancellation was a hard blow. Along with being a top-notch chef, Lagasse is also a talented musician. Audience members got to see the side of him during Emerald Live. Although the band for Emerald Live was run by musician Leonard Gibbs, 
Lagasiewicz often joined the band on the drums before commercial breaks. His playing added a spark of fun and spontaneity to the show, as audience members got to experience the exuberant chef in new ways. In fact, after graduating high school, Lagasse was offered a full scholarship to the New England Conservatory of Music, but he passed it up to follow his culinary aspirations. He got a degree from Johnson and Wales University, then trained in Europe to further perfect his technique. So while Lagasse's heart may be in the kitchen, there's no denying that he's a multi-talented man. Part of the charm of Emerald Live was Lagasse's interaction with the audience. He would typically walk through the crowd shaking hands and patting the shoulders of his adoring fans. His show was so much more than just a cooking series, offering audience members a real immersion into Lagasse's world. Throughout each episode, he bantered and joked with fans, and he was even known to give out tasty bites of what was cooking. In some instances, he doled out ham, biscuits, and fruit, while at other times he showered the audience with seasonings. The generous and unpredictable host was even known to throw sweets like ice cream and frozen Snickers bars to amp up the audience. The potential of getting a bonus gift added to the novelty of Emerald Live, giving the audience yet another reason to love the show. Hindsight is 2020, and looking back, we can all see that Emerald Live was a raging success for the majority of the time that it aired. Before the premiere, however, not everyone was so sure about it. Even though Emerald Live was an immediate hit, the show had naysayers from the start. In his book about the Food Network, Alan Salkin notes that Joe Lingen, one of its founders, thought Lagasse was the least likely of all the stars on the network to succeed as a celebrity chef. You gotta have a little, what's that here, sauce? <laughs> oh yeah. This negative impression wasn't helped by terrible ratings for the chef's first two shows. After flopping so dramatically, it was hard to imagine that Lagasse had star potential. However, as the records show, Lagasse just needed to find the right show to display his talent and personality to the world. No matter what you think about Lagasse, no one can deny that he marches to the beat of his own drum. He stole the hearts of food lovers across America with his ridiculous TV persona, making cooking fun and action-packed for even the most hopeless home chefs. Lagasse showed his wild side with a variety of antics, but his unforgettable phrases were some of his signature moves. Lagasse seems to have invented his own vocabulary, coining words and phrases like BAM, HAPPY HAPPY HAPPY, and LET'S KICK IT UP A NOTCH. One unexpected result of his success was that Food Network lovers around the country adopted his lingo, affectionately quoting him as they cooked his recipes and went through their days. Well then, I guess it's time to take it up a notch. Not only did Lagasse change the way people experienced cooking television, but he gave his fans a whole new set of expressions. In the days of Emerald Live, his Emeraldisms were well known by all, whether you watched the show or not. The appeal of Emerald Live wasn't its highly technical cooking methods or Lagasse's detailed instructions for making a top-notch dinner. While the show offered practical cooking techniques and allowed viewers to feel confident in the kitchen, its main draws were more about the entertainment and fun of the band, jokes, and overall performance. More than just being a crazy version of your classic cooking show, this Food Network staple has since been described as the wildest show ever produced by the network. <laughs> Best-selling author David Chef wrote, Emerald Live is the most popular, wildest cooking show to ever appear on American television. In fact, because of his unhinged behavior and constant over-the-top antics, Lagasse was nicknamed the Jerry Seinfeld of the Food Network. Watching Emerald Live could be less like watching a cooking show and more like a circus with Lagasse as the featured act. He'd throw food at the audience, sporadically yell out BAM and GARLIC and crack jokes with his fans. The impressive part is that in every episode, he still managed to cook a delicious meal. Although by now the Food Network has aired a number of series that are out of the box, Emerald Live still hangs on to the title of wildest cooking show in the network's history. It's been established that this 90s and early 2000s show was the talk of the town in its heyday, but more importantly, Emerald Live played a key part in making the Food Network popular. Back in the day, it was a small network trying to find its audience, far from the household name it is today. As NPR wrote, No one thought a scrappy startup dedicated to food would go anywhere. This was the general view of the Food Network when Emerald Live premiered back in 1997. The fledgling network shows had low ratings and were far from being a success. Then Emerald Live changed everything with its sky-high ratings and ardent followers. When Lagasse's first show was produced in the early 90s, the Food Network had a following of 6.8 million homes. A decade later when Emerald Live was cancelled, that number had jumped to over 90 million. The Food Network's skyrocket to success was in large part due to Lagasse and his out-there cooking show. When most food fans think of Emerald Live, they remember Lagasse's chaotic and lovable presence. Whether the host was saying garlic in his distinctive East Coast accent or passing out sweets during commercial breaks, this iconic Food Network show was about so much more than cooking. Along with being a seminal show that could never quite be replicated, Emerald Live was the first food show to merit a seven-figure contract. Back in the 90s, Lagasse was the man of the hour, and the Food Network chose to up its game with him rather than Bobby Flay or Mario Batali. 
For Emerald Live, the network offered Lagasse a three-year contract at $333,334 each year. They then advertised the agreement as a million-dollar deal to showcase the network's financial health to affiliates. At the time, a million bucks over three years was a big deal, which only goes to show Lagasse's popularity and value as one of the original Food Network stars.